This is River Talks with Jonathan Brush, President and CEO of Unbound. This is the fourth episode in our ongoing series on what it means to thrive, particularly in terms of what it means to thrive for young adults moving into full adulthood. In the first episode, we just introduced what it means to thrive. In the second, we talked about owning your purpose. In the third, we talked about serving others. And in this episode, we talk about healthy relationships. We have a saying in Unbound that time and tasks only make sense in the context of relationships. And we go on from there to talk about a bunch of different things. But I think part what we are trying to say with that statement and we try to teach our students is that the world will constantly define who you are and what you do by the way you spend your time, which is maybe a measurement of how you live your days and what you accomplish during that period. So your time and your tasks. It is not that those things are unimportant. Being able to manage our time well and to be able to manage our tasks well are, are essential parts of, of what it means to be human and of what it means to live and to accomplish things in this world. But those things only really do make sense in the context of relationships. And ultimately, your satisfaction in your life and your ability to thrive will be primarily determined by the quality of the relationships that you have with those around you. Now, we take this a step further and in Unbound, and I would just argue in general, we say that, that time and tasks are only understood in the context of relationships, and that it is essential for us to understand that everybody you meet is made in the image of God. And, and the, in fancy theological language, that is everybody carries the Imago Dei, that they, are, they carry this image of God with them. And so as Christians, as, as somebody who, as, as people who believe in the resurrected Christ, then we believe in a worldview that says that God made all things, and that humans have a special part in that creation, that humans were, as defined in the earliest parts of the Bible in Genesis, were, were made in the image of God. And that has some implications for our relationships, some exciting ones and some difficult ones. And so the exciting ones are just that, you know, it, it gives us clarity to know that focusing on relationships with others is always going to be and always should be a high priority for whatever it is that we're doing and that we have to never lose sight of the fact that ultimately our, our, our work, how we serve others, how we treat others all has to be done in the light of this understanding that everybody's made in the image of God. The uncomfortable implications is that everybody is made in the image of God, no exceptions. And what I tell our sto- students often is that as Christians, you don't ever have the luxury of fighting orcs. In other words, that one of the reasons that Middle Earth and J.R. Tolkien's world is is so satisfying to so many is that there are these creatures in that world that are ultimately evil. And so there is no redemptive pattern for an orc in Middle Earth. The best thing you can do in Middle Earth to make Middle Earth better is to kill evil, is to to destroy orcs, is to fight against them. And, And so there's this clarity, there's this moral purity to that world that allows you to say, these things, these creatures are irredeemably evil and need to be eliminated. Now, there is certainly evil in the world, and there is certainly evidence of that in many places. But as Christians, we have to understand first and foremost, that all people are made in the image of God. And while capable of doing evil and expressing evil and carrying out evil acts, when we deal with those people, we have to deal with them always remembering that they are ultimately made in the image of God. That has implications for how we deal with them. Even if we have to deal with them in a way that stops that evil or has to confront that evil, we can't lose sight of the fact that all people, while they're still alive, are still reachable by God's grace and God's redemption. And so that, that colors interactions with everybody else. So in order to thrive, we have to be able to understand relationships. And I would go further and say that to, to really thrive, to, to be able to have healthy relationships, requires this understanding, this base idea that relationships aren't just something natural like breathing, that everybody sort of knows how to do them. While it is true that we all relate to people, and so we build up patterns of how we relate to people, it is also true that there is a, a skill to building and maintaining healthy relationships. That is a skill that can be learned, that it can be practiced. And that there are certain principles and there are certain certain things that if you understand, you'll be able to practice them and you'll be able to get better at relationships. And ultimately, those who are best at relationships, who are able to see others as made in the image of God, 
people to make, maintain, and strengthen healthy relationships, those folks are better equipped to be able to thrive.